the comparable day. Appreciate you, Pastor. I'd like to say praise the Lord to everyone. Good morning and welcome to Oak City uh, Church Sunday morning Bible study. Um, we just thank God for allowing us to see yet another day and come together to call on the name of Jesus. We'll get started with our service this morning, um, opening up with prayer by Brother Carl King. Our scripture reading will come from our own Sister Joyce Fennessy, and our song today will be by Sister Robin Ladd. God bless you, uh, Brother Carl. <laughs> Oh, you're still on mute. Hey, Brother Carl, I think you may be on mute. Are you, are, did you, are you reading the scripture? I was praying, okay. I may, you may be on mute. My God, I must have been on mute. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let us close our eyes again. I'm, I'm so sorry. No problem. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning in our right minds. Lord, we thank you for protecting our families and keeping us safe through the night, Lord. We thank you for blessing us from seen and unseen danger, Father. We just want to thank you. We just want to get closer to you. Lord, we thank you for putting a hedge of protection around us and our friends, and my church family, my family. Lord, we just want to get closer to you. I thank you for my church family, our pastors and uh, my family and everybody. Lord, just, just bless me to see with a different eye, to have more understanding that you are who you are. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, thank you, Brother Carl. Sister Joyce. Praise the Lord. Um, I will be reading out of First Chronicles uh, 16th chapter, the 8th through the 11th verse. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wonder, wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of, of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his faith continually. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sister Robin. Man, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I thought we'd um, take it back a bit. I think we've done this one before, but I'm not sure how recently. Um, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow 
no other fountain I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Yes. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. She said she didn't know how recently she had sang that. That should be all of our songs every day. So some of us should have sang it this morning. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Our righteousness, our peace, our hope, our salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Robin. We appreciate that song so much. We thank God for his blood. Thank God for the service thus far. We're getting ready to turn this service over to our own and very capable, wonderful, faithful man of God, our <laughs> pastor, our brother, Pastor Bobby Ladd. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. God him praise. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Robin's trying to start something this morning. Trying, <laughs> yeah. to, stay on, trying to stay on course. <laughs> We're going to sing the blood of Jesus. We may, we may mess things up a little bit. Thank God for his blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. All right. Well, um, before I go, I just want to ask, are there any special testimonies today? I know that uh, it's Sunday. We're going to take testimonies. We'll see if anybody has a special testimony before we go into the service today. God bless. I just want to uh, thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Um, um, just last Friday, um, I think it was December 2nd, we had our office Christmas party, and I sat on a committee with one of our coworkers. We had a good time. And then on yes, Friday, this past Friday, they called and told me she suffered a heart attack at work. Just a difference in one week. So that's like when Brother Carl and I were talking this morning, we thank God for waking us up this morning. I always thank God that I realized he woke me up this morning because there's a difference in a second and a day and we can never fail to come back and tell the Lord, thank you. Just want to thank God for allowing us to come back together today and call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's come off mute and just give God a hand praise. Amen. Thank you, dude. You're beautiful. Thank Amen. God. Every day. Amen. Bless everybody. Right. We'll go to Galatians 4 now. If you are if you could put up Galatians 4. We'll get into today's lesson. Amen. Thank you, Dave. I think we all needed that. 
every second. And we're verses uh with we were up on verse seven in the sl as a slow trip through Galatians four, but I wanted to get us to get all that we can get out of this before we go. So we you know actually through verses one um, verses I think one verse um, we finished verse seven last uh, the, uh, last Sunday, so we're actually going to start on verse eight. But go ahead, sweetheart, and pray for us on um, today. Father God, we just come before you once again. God, we just thank you so much. God, you just do so much. God, you pour so much into us. God, and we just appreciate you. We praise you. God, we pray, God, that we just wake up each and every morning striving to walk worthy of the calling and the purpose which you have called each and every one of us into, God. God, right now, we pray that you bless your word, bless the vessel, God, in which you are used. God, fill me up with your spirit. God, touch his body, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Work on him, God, from the inside out, God. And bless him, God, as he continues to as he speaks your word, God, on today, God. Help us to have open ears and open hearts to receive it and to walk therein, God. Have your way, Father God, in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God for that prayer. And uh, I really enjoyed what you said, blessing from the inside out. I think uh, Evangelist Tyler owns that phrase, blessing from the inside out. And I started praying that way after hearing her pray that way. And I'm glad it's been infectious. Uh, we need to touch. We need to touch from the inside out. And I think God is a God that can do that. So thank yeah. you, honey. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in verse eight, but just to get the flow of the context here, um, show me verses one through seven. And so, um, Grace, if you would mind, go ahead and read verse one through seven, just so we get the flow going into verse eight. We covered this, so I won't teach back through it, but uh, we, we were left off at verse eight. But just to get the flow, let's go back through, just read it real quick, going through. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ, through Christ. So, so we covered the last time, uh, the last few times we've covered verses one through seven. Last Sunday, we talked about the difference between being a servant and a son. So I won't go back to that, and, uh, but it was a significant difference for us. Being, and, and the difference is that we have the Spirit of God. We have the Holy Spirit, something that never happened prior to Acts 2, prior to the church being established in the book of Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit fell, and man became a vessel of the Spirit of God. It's something, as we said before, the angels didn't even understand this. How can man... And, 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 be a vessel. How can man have the spirit of God? So none of the angels have the spirit of God in them. And so it's a treasure that we have in earthen vessels. The whole idea of God in us is just amazing. Something with a treasure and a reverence. And again, something the angels did not even understand. And so that kicked off what we call the church age. The Bible calls Holy Spirit, um, the, the spirit of Christ in different places, the spirit of God. But he indwells us. He indwells sinful man. And, and that's why the scripture tells us our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And to be careful what you do with your body because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That ought to mean something to us. Amen. It ought to mean something. And so uh, Paul is teaching uh, these Galatians some basic principles. Father, don't go back. Once you've been, once you don't go back and desire to be in the streets again. If you're on the streets as a beggar and some king comes along and makes you part of his household, brings the royal family, don't go back to the streets and live in the gutters. How can you do that? He was making a very stark comparison between the law and grace. 
And keep in mind, Paul was trying to convince believers, Christians, to not go back and do the things the law required. And, and what is amazing to me is that in this day and age that we still have people, Christians, at any level that want to go back and be under the law. They want to keep the Sabbath, keep the new moon, have feasts, be circumcised, all the elements of the law. They want to go back and do that. And the thing about it is, in Paul's day, they did not have the benefit of the New Testament. All they had was tradition and history. So it's more understandable that they would make this crazy mistake of wanting to go back into the law, not having hard documentation. But we have the whole New Testament. How can we go back under the law? How, how can this even be an issue about wanting to meet on the Sabbath day? Or wanting to be, how can it even be an issue? Uh, real quick, somebody get me Romans 6, 14. Real, real, real quick, really put it up on the screen. It's, 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 it's such, such a non-issue. 6, 14. Uh, Romans 6, 14. Uh, this this shouldn't even be an issue. Yeah, you got to go ahead and read it. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Ye are not under the law, but under grace. It's, it's, so th this wasn't documented <laughs> in Paul's day. But now we say, you're not under the law. Give me um, uh, Romans, the 10th chapter. We're planning to go off here, but give me, give me, Verses one through four, real quickly. Brethren, mm -hmm. my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Uh -huh. But Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Christ, we have not, Christ is the end of the law. <laughs> to so there's no way you could convince me to go back under the law on the in the element. I've got too much scripture, too much Bible, too much history here. And, and they didn't have this. The Galatians didn't have this. Unfortunately, we have what Paul wrote. But, but now we look at Christ as the end of the law. How, how is it possible that anyone, you know, this way is it, it, so plain. The Bible says there should be a way there. Even fools won't have to err <laughs> in it. There should be a way called the way of holiness. And fools won't have to err. You'd have to be foolish to go back under the law in light of all this scripture. Christ is the end of the law. Read that verse one more time. Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believes. You ever, you, you, you ever talk with somebody in their position was so foolish, you say, why are we even having this argument? You know better than Why are we even debating this? You know that you don't blindfold yourself and go out in the middle of the highway and stand. You know that. You're old enough to know that. You don't do that. You don't go out in the middle of the highway and play. Why are we even having this discussion? But it looked like it was more space. Mom looked like it was fun. Why are we having this argument? Why did you miss school and not tell me? Why are we having this argument? Well, I thought it might be kind of, no, why are we, you know this is wrong. There's no debate here. And this is one of those cases where Paul is like, you foolish Galatians. What? It's almost like, why are we even discussing this? So today, when somebody comes and says, we need to keep the law, we need to be circumcised, we know better. We have too much scripture. Christ is the end of the law. You're not under the law. So Paul was having a real hard time with these folks. And he had been there teaching them, um, over and over again, we showed that he he visited this, these particular churches every missionary journey over a decade, taught them about grace. He's like, why are we dealing with this? Let's go back to chapter four now. Galatians, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter four. Okay, so we're picking up at verse eight. He says, um, um, he says, so we covered verse seven last, sun, last Sunday. Wherefore, there are now, now no more servant but a son. If a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We talked about the fact that, that we're children because of the Holy Spirit in us. Now he says, how, how be it then, when you knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. What's this telling us? He's telling us, that in this Galatian church, in these churches at Lystra and Der Derby and the city of Antioch, the churches of Galatia, multiple churches, multiple assemblies, he's saying that there were Gentiles there as well as Jews. We know that there are Jews there because the Jews were the ones who knew the law. And they would come in saying, you need to do this in order to also 
to please God and be saved, you need to also keep the law. We know that there were Jews there because of the nature of this whole book, telling them that you don't have to go back under the law. You can't go back under the law if you weren't ever under it. You can't go back. But we also realize there were Gentiles there because he says, before you came to God, you did service unto idols. He wouldn't have been saying that about Jews because the Jews worship Yahweh, the true God. He would not say this about Jewish believers. So in this church in Galatia, there were Jews who come to Christ and Gentiles. It was just the Jewish brothers were getting the Gentile brothers and sisters confused. How be it then when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature were no God. So there were heathens that had come into Christ that were being carried away by the foolishness of these Judaizers. Give me verse nine, go ahead and read it for me, baby. Verse nine. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather, are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Now, people don't like you talking about the law. <laughs> I was telling somebody, you know, that, that, that law was nailed to the cross, those ordinances and things. And, and then you can't insult the law like that. <laughs> well, what about Paul? Paul called the elements of those law weak, powerless to say, takas, beggarly, no power to enrich, poverty stricken. Paul did not mince words when it came to the law. We know that the law is good. He, Paul wrote that. But when it came to going back under the law, this was Paul's description, although um, powerless, <laughs> weak. Astenos, takas. These are not nice words in the Greek. It means weak, pathetic, and powerless to say. Not pathetic, but powerless to say. So he had no kind words about the law for believers wanting to go under the law. So if you don't like what I said about the law, you, you won't, you'll hate what Paul said about it. There's no way saints need to go back into that. There's powerful words. Uh, so we, we can't even consider it. Based on Paul's description, we can't even consider going back under the law. We can't consider meeting on the Sabbath. We can't consider circumcision. And, and, he, and here's the funny part. The people that want to go back into the law, half the time they want to cherry pick about the law. But you know, the law, when, when, when you look at the law, uh, <laughs> not only the Ten Commandments, because the moral law is what they make the, the issue out of, the Ten Commandments. But there's 613 other, uh, 600, over 600 commandments. Uh, for example, did you know by the law, if you planted a tree, you couldn't eat from the fruit for three years after you planted it, otherwise you're violating the law? You had to get that, that fruit three years. If you're going to keep the law, every time you go to the supermarket and pick up an apple, you need to ask that grocer, has this tree been there three years before y'all picked this apple? <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> if it's under three years, you eat that apple, you have broken the law. And the book of James tells us, if you break the law at one point, come on, somebody, you break the law and all. Did you know by the law, you could not boil the meat of a cow uh, in the milk of his mother. Otherwise, you have broken the law. If you break the law at one point, you've broken it in all. You can't keep the law. The ones who want to keep the law, you cannot keep the law. You know, it's 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 just <laughs> yeah. And you really you really don't want to be under. Paul is trying to tell you people you really don't want to be under. Y'all know he said you don't know what you asking for. He said these are weak and beggarly, and all they did was point us to Christ. Under the law, you couldn't wear mixed garments. You can wear a polyester suit. Your garment had to be made of one. And, and, and all these laws and ordinances that God gave Israel to show them their holiness. He didn't want them to mix the garments because he wanted to show that, uh, for example, you couldn't wear a polyester wool suit because you couldn't wear mixed garments made of mixed materials because he wanted everything to be holy, one thing. It was to show them purity. But if you're going to keep the law, then you got to go through and just only have a cotton. It's only have, you can't have a mixed material. <laughs> Otherwise, you're breaking the law. And so the ones who want to take you back, they can't even keep the law themselves. And Paul says this is ignorance. They have a zeal, as we saw in Romans 10. A zeal, energy, excitement, but no knowledge. 
and going about to establish your own righteousness have ignored the righteousness of God. Well, what's the righteousness of God? He explains chapter 10. <laughs> it's salvation by grace through faith, shed blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so let's come back to back to eight. He says, how, how be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them who, by, who are by nature no gods. That's the heathens that came in to church. And we do get people that, that, that come from a background with, where they didn't grow up in church that get saved. And they're just as saved as the ones who grew up in church. And he says, but now if you have known God or rather are known by God, that is so cool. The fact that God knows my name, they sing a song, God knows my name. He says, let me put this in perspective for you. Now that you come to know God or rather think about this, God knows you. <laughs> you're in a personal relationship with God. He's, you're his son. You're his daughter now. After you have become a child of God, and God knows you by name. I'll turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements. And then I see those some ugly words in the Greek. Astenos, takas, powers. You don't go back under that. Then he says in verse 10, you observe days and months and times and years. And this is a pretty funny verse on some levels because this is why people such as the um, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't celebrate birthdays or Christmas. <laughs> Because they say the Bible, Paul criticizes people for observing days and months and times and years. And it's so hilarious because it's totally taken out of context here. He is talking about keeping the law. And if you look at the law, they had special observances for days, months, time. They didn't talk about somebody's birthday. Does, does any, anything in this context suggest <laughs> that this is talking about somebody's birthday or their anniversary? It, it's, you know, some of, some of the arguments you get in with people are so ridiculous. We don't celebrate birthday. Bible says you observe the month down. You go, wow, really? <laughs> I could be mean right here, but I'm not. <laughs> do it, Pastor, do it. <laughs> it's like some I got your people, back. <laughs> I, know, I know you do, Pastor John. But, but the ludicrousity of that, just to read, ridiculousness of that i mean i mean these some of these people have no just no right to be interpreting scripture for anybody i mean it's, it's just some people i would not let teach me <laughs> on some things <laughs> i started to name some figures in, in politics have they distinguished themselves recently but i'm holding my tongue but i um uh, just some people you cannot learn some things from. And somebody who says that you observe days and months and times and years, and, and they're going to teach about birthdays in the context of what we just read when Paul was clearly talking about the law and not, and they say this means birthdays, anniversaries. How ridiculous is that? The Jews had days that they observed, the day of Passover, the Passover. I, I, I mean, the day of atonement. You're the most holy day. This is what Paul, the day of atonement, where you actually took two goats. We get our term scapegoat from the Jewish Passover, uh, from, from the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. The, the priest would go make an offering for himself, sacrifice for his own sin. That, and I could preach here about, about this priest, Jesus, who didn't have to make no sacrifices for his own sins. But the officiating priest, at, at, at on, at, at on the Day of Atonement, he was sacrificed for his own sins first because he didn't want to die going to, going to offer sacrifice for the people. He would take a bath, ceremonial bath. But they would take two goats and the priest would lay hands on one goat and, and send him into the wilderness to signify that the sins were going to be separated from the people, that God was separating the sins from the people. Then they would sacrifice the other goat. And the goat that got sent into the wilderness, he lived. He, he was a goat that escaped. That's where we get the phrase scapegoat from. That was the Day of Atonement. Paul says, you observe days and months. Uh, those of us who are familiar uh, with astronomy, we know that there, there's, a, there's a new moon. Um, you know, the, 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 the same way the sun revolves around, uh, the earth revolves around the sun, well, the moon revolves around the earth. And it takes about, whereas it takes us 365 days for the earth to make its orbit around the sun 
it only takes the moon about 29 to 30 days to make its orbit around the earth. We call that a new moon. <laughs> and that's how we get our calendars, the month. The month comes from how the moon. So we see a different side of the moon. <laughs> and, and if the sun is on the hitting the other side of the moon, we call it the dark side of the moon. All right, anyway, God set up a festival. Every new moon, they would offer lambs and sacrifices. And the idea would be, if in God, in case there were some sins that didn't get covered last month, we're going to make a sacrifice every time there's a new moon. And that's going to cover our sins from last month that we didn't get to the church, that we didn't get to the temple with. And that was the feast of the new moon. Paul says you observe days and months and times and years. So these different feasts, the feast of the Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, there was even feast, feast of booths. And during that time, they would offer sacrifices and they would actually live in what we would call straw huts to signify the time that when God, when God was bringing Israel through the wilderness and they had to have a temporary uh, tabernacle in the wilderness. And they would actually live in, 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 in for part of that festival for, for, uh, for the, there was an eight day festival and they would live part of that festival in what we would call straw houses, thatch houses, temporary booths, they said, to, to, to remind them how God brought them through the wilderness. All the sacrifices and all the feasts and festivals that God established would remind them of God's deliverance. There was a feast of Purim, which celebrated how God delivered the Jews from, uh, from Haman. He said he, he was second in the kingdom, set up to destroy all the Jews, God delivered. They would have a feast of Purim to celebrate that. And so all the feasts and things that God set up if you go through them, there, there was a sabbatical year in which you couldn't sow any seed in the land. The land had to, so that was a year that they observed every seven years. Every seven times seven years was a year of Jubilee. You had to set all the, all the slaves free. Every four to nine years, you had to turn that man loose if he was a slave. And you had to be generous with debts that were given. And there were even ordinances that said, hey, you can't, you, you got to lend the poor people money. You can't just qualify them. And you can't just not lend them money because the year of Jubilee is approaching. In other words, I know next year's a year of Jubilee. I'm going to have to forgive you this debt. <laughs> so I'm not going to launch it. You couldn't even do that. So he had to set regulations about that. So Paul was saying, you, you observing all these things that God said. I mean, God was very serious about the nation Israel observing those days when he set them up. But he says, you've been delivered from all that. Christ is the end of the law. For all that believe, you're not under the law anymore. You're under grace. Don't go back to this weak, this astronauts and takas. Don't go back to that stuff. And he was really uh, giving it to these Galatians about trying to go back. How much more should we be concerned and adamant about not going back under grace, uh, back under the law, under grace? Now that we have the document, and that we not only have the 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 old testament like that we got the whole new testament where paul went off on this stuff it's foolish for us to go back when god uh what, what time is it um okay a few minutes to wrap up here um uh, when god set up the law he decided that he would use circumcision as a sign as a token to him and abraham and, and this was really before the law it's just about the jewish people because the law was really codified when Moses came along, 400 and something years after Abraham, right? So God established circumcision. Every Jew had to be circumcised. That's what God chose to do, all the sins of Abraham. It was never for non-descendants of Abraham. And then when Moses came along, God codified it. And God set aside the Sabbath day. And he set up this whole system. Uh, I mean, if you look at the law, I mean, you, you, you've got way more than just the Ten Commandments. But James is so clear that if you're going to be under the law, if you violate it at one point, you violate it in all. So God established a system. But when God <laughs> raised up Christ Jesus from the dead, the veil of the temple, if you remember from the Gospels, is split in two. And in, in the book of Colossians, Paul explains that the two became one. It's no longer Jew and Gentile. It's just a church now. And God, who established the temple in the Old Testament, was the one who ripped the veil in two 
signifying the end. And this is why this is why Jesus said the law and prophets were until John. See, I'm here now. <laughs> it's about to change. I'm the son of God. <laughs> we can't go back under that self. I'm here in the flesh and destroy this temple and I'll raise it up. And the ones who want to keep the law, are they sacrificing animals now? What, what are they doing to, to, to get, oh, we're going to use Jesus to, 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 to get the sin stuff right, and then we're going to keep all this other stuff. Well, what is that doing? Is that adding righteousness to the cross? Are you, are you adding to the blood here? Does grace need something to make it more complete? <laughs> the blood of Jesus has been shed, and I'm going to go check and make sure that that's good enough because I might need to add something to it to get right with God. It's a ridiculous proposition. And Paul saying, you desire to be in bondage. Why would you be simply, why would you go back under that stuff? Have it been set free? I don't have chapter five, but I'm going to steal a verse chapter five. Stand fast, therefore, in the living words, Christ has made you. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back to that mess. Paul calls it a yoke of bondage. So I don't have to be reverent when it comes to the law. <laughs> oh, not reverent. <laughs> don't go back in that bondage. And some of these newfangled people want to keep the law want you to be reverent about the law. No, it's weak and beggarly. It's astonos and takos and it's bondage. It's the Bible. But to save you, I might have to say it a little nicer to get you back right. But understand what the scripture says. Is weak and beggarly. All right. So um, when he talks about observing days and months and times and years, let's talk about all those festivals and things God said. And we, and we could go through them. They're wonderful. Each one, feast of trumpets, where God just have them, uh, you know, blow the trumpets uh, on the seventh month, and, uh, and 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 just different ways that God reminds him, not reminds him of the deliverance, the Passover, the blood on the doorpost. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Everything pointing to Christ. When Christ, when God sees the blood of Christ on our account, he passes over. <laughs> our sins are forgiven and we're made whole. Every one of those, every one of those ordinances, I can point to Christ. And when Christ came, you don't need the symbol anymore. You know, every now and then they give you a ticket for something. And, 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 you, and, 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 and when you get a ticket for an airplane, you keep that ticket because that's your ticket. But once you give that ticket, to that airline and get on the plane, you don't need that ticket anymore. <laughs> you, you, you know, don't, don't ask me where my ticket is. I gave it up. I'm, I got the real thing now. I'm on, I'm on the plane now. Uh, you, you know, and once and once I get back, get go from here to Hawaii and land, and, and you tell me you need a ticket. Where's your ticket? I'm in Hawaii now. <laughs> I don't need a ticket. You, you know, don't tell, tell me, go back and find your ticket. You, go see, I'm not gone. I'm not leaving this beach. Lost your mind. <laughs> All this stuff was pointing to Jesus. Now I got Jesus now. There's no way I'm going back to stuff that was pointing me here. And this is what Paul is, is trying to, trying to make plain, make plain. After you give me, uh, after I watch a football game, I still got my ticket. You cannot sell me a ticket to a game that's already been played. This ticket was worth $5,000 two hours ago, the Super Bowl ticket. But the game's been played. Don't come to me with a Super Bowl ticket. Then I'm going to let you have for $100, and the game is already over. That ticket's worthless now. There was a time when it was paid. Well, that time has passed. And that's all Paul said. We can't go back on law. It's done. The, bill, Christ, the blood has been shed. Christ has raised himself from the dead. <laughs> Your ticket's been paid, and you're saved by grace through faith. There's no way you're going to get me to go back and add something to the blood of Jesus to make me right with God. When I see the blood, I'll pass over. We need to learn from what Paul has said. So that gives us to um, gets us to verse 10, God willing. Uh, I, said, I said it's going to be a slow journey. We're going to get everything we need to get out of, out of chapter 4. I requested this chapter because there's so much in it that we need to, to bring out and understand. And once we're done with Galatians, I don't think there'll be, a, I think there's a 0% chance anybody will ever be able to convince you of any element of the law. I do want to find that scripture in James, which says if you uh, violate the law at one point, 
um, you're guilty, but all. I don't remember the exact verse. I want to close with that one just as a reminder that you can't keep the law. Is uh, so can my, Somebody help me find that. Let's see here. I think that's in. We'll close on that point. It's James 2.10. Oh, thank you. James 2.10. Would you read it for me, sweetheart? For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Whosoever should keep the whole law. And, and so, so if they could go back on law, they can't keep all that stuff that we talked about. I'd rather have the law ended like Christ has said and have Jesus be my righteous. I can either have confidence in myself or confidence in Christ. My confidence is in Jesus Christ. And so again, to, to end on um, in Galatians 4, he says, go back to Galatians 4. We'll read the last verse. I'll get back to D. But now, after you've known God, or rather known of God, do you really want to go back? <laughs> do you really want to go back to something else? I think not. All right, I want to give it to, uh, to uh, back to D. And uh, next time, next Sunday, God willing, we pick up at, uh, um, I'm sorry, give it to, to Pastor John. I think Pastor Daryl's probably been snatched up in Miami. Get back to Pastor John for, and then, then over to D. But this, this idea that anybody could make us, convince us, reason with us to keep the law saint, we ought to be able to blow them out of the water with what Paul is saying in the Bible says. Amen. And God bless you. I give you Pastor John. Amen. Uh, very wonderful, powerful lesson, Pastor Bobby. Heavy hitter, bringing it strong. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it's important to understand. It's not Pastor Bobby's zeal that we're really experiencing. It's not Pastor John's zeal that we're experiencing. It's it's the Apostle Paul's zeal <laughs> that we're really experiencing. I mean, the Apostle Paul is the one who initially brought that strong. And, and I could even go back further and say, it's God's zeal. It's, it's the Holy Spirit through, through the Apostle Paul, um, who wants it to be extremely clear that we're not under the law, we're under grace. Like, like if what we're doing is buying us heaven, then what Jesus did is not as important. Don't, I mean, we, we are diminishing the work of the cross when we when we are so fixated on something we're doing um so anyway uh wonderful lesson i feel energized i want to i want to boy i want to take out a sword just being the, like, like i mean i just feel energized just this zeal but but here's the thing uh you know i feel like that this zeal that's given by god is contagious like when you start to really fight for the kingdom of God, to love God's word, to love God's truth, other people around you want to be involved. Like, like, like they get, they get excited. They want to start fighting. And Paul's like desire and love towards the church and love towards God's word and love towards God's, God's truth, you know, it is, is, you know, I don't know. It's causing me to get excited. It's causing Pastor Bob to get excited. So I just, I, I'm just excited. And I know that, I know that each and every one of us here is just so thankful to God for the blood of Jesus that ends the argument, that ends the, ends the threat, that ends the, like, it, it's over. The blood of Jesus is the answer. So uh, I just thank God. Uh, for Pastor Bobby for understanding grace. Um, and I don't think that that makes me less of a warrior. I think that makes me more of a warrior because now I'm fighting for my daddy. <laughs> like, like, I mean, you, you think about it, you know, these guys treat God like he's like, he's some like, you know, boss at their job, you know? And, and I mean, I'm not saying you might not admire and care about the boss at your job, but if the boss of my job were in a fight outside with five dogs and, and, and a big burly man, I ain't going to treat it like if it was my daddy out there, you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm coming with it. I mean, and, and when we, when we understand God is our father, like we don't, we don't, we don't need to, he paid for us himself. Like, let's get in this war and fight. <laughs> like, 
All right, I'm sorry, too much. All right, uh, let's see, is Pastor Daryl or is it Sister Dolores? Sister Dolores. Oh, thank God, thank God. Thank God for the blood. Amen. We thank Amen. God for the blood. We thank God for this teaching today. We thank God for our pastor, Pastor John, who continues to get, what did you say, uh, Pastor Bobby? Good, somebody said gooder gooder and gooder. gooder. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quote given to me. I don't know if he can get any more zealous, but he's he's good. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God hey, for the blood. Hey, yes. And, and uh, let me say something why, why, because you came back to me. There was When I was right at the end, when I was giving a close out, I was kind of stalled a little bit because it was a script that kept coming to my mind. It was getting getting away from me. So I was I was done, but I was like, I got one more script. I couldn't think of what. So I kind of took two minutes and I, and I repeated myself. I was like, what's the script I want to come? And it finally came to me while Pastor John was talking. I want to leave that today uh, and then give it back to you. It's, it's Colossians uh, 2, um, 2, 16. And that's why I was struggling at the end. I was like, I, I, what's this script? And it wouldn't come, so I went in and closed it out. There it is. It came back to me when Pastor John was speaking. Colossians 2 and 16. And um, it, 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 talking about the blood of Jesus and the cross, in verse 15 it says, he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphant, how he went down to hell and just destroyed everything. And then it says in 16, let no, let no man, Jesus did all this stuff. If you, if you go back to blotting out the handwriting of ordinances against them, nailing it to the cross, uh, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, all that law that was against us, um, contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. Talking about Jesus, spoiling principalities and powers, made a show of the devil openly. Then he says, let no man therefore judge you in meat, drink, or respect of the holy day, the new moon, or the Sabbath. <laughs> He said, "This is why. This is this is why what Christ accomplished." He said, "He said, looking at what Christ don't don't even don't let anybody, don't let anybody talk to you about this stuff." And that's the verse I was trying to think of. Why? How can you talk about keeping the Sabbath in light? He said, "He said, look at what Jesus done. Don't let nobody talk to you about keeping the Sabbath in these festivals." He he, he, he nailed it to the cross. He nailed all those ordinances to the cross. Don't go pick them off of there. And that's the scripture I was trying to think of to close out with. It kept escaping me. It kept escaping me. And then it came back while Pastor John was talking. But but anybody wants to talk about the Sabbath, take them here and say, look, <laughs> this puts the cross in direct opposition to these ordinances. So God bless you. Thank you for letting me get that in. Back to you. Back to you, Dee. Amen. We thank God. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we appreciate uh, God and all that he's done for us. I see you, Pastor John. Knock them out, knock them out, <laughs> knock them out with the word. <laughs> uh, if someone would get, put up our given opportunities, I would appreciate it. Um, every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but God loveth a cheerful giver. And that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Um, we have five ways to give. Um, Cash App, Givelify, Sale, Venmo, and then um, also you can mail a check to our PO box. If you have a question or a prayer request, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, via, um, either by phone or text message at 405-778-4949. Our pastors would be more than happy to speak with you, pray with you, whatever your concern may be. We'd like to thank you for your continuous support support of the ministry. May God continue to richly bless you. Um, and at this time, we're going to close our service out in prayer. We're going to ask Sister DeAndre to lead us in prayer today, please. Are there any prayer requests? Sister DeAndre, if you uh, would remember my coworker, her name is Becky. Their main concern is she was without oxygen to the brain um, on Friday. We know God is able. We know God is a healer. Um, so according to his will, we just ask that God speak and touch our minister Harper's body and brother cause as well. Remember brother Keith, he's on balance and health stuff right now. So just remember him. And remember our pastor also remember, um, Maxwell family, my dad and, uh, mom's still. 
please remember the Young family. Uh, the funeral services are Tuesday. Pray that the Lord would undertake uh, for the bereaved family. Is there anyone else? Okay. In prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful message today, God. Um, just this reminder that um, the cross, the, the, the law, was a tool, Father, to lead us to the cross, God, where there is redemption in the blood of Jesus and not in our own works, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would watch over each prayer request, God, that went forth today, God, that you would protect and keep and provide, God. Watch over uh, Becky, God, touch her body, heal, protect, and deliver, God. I pray that she knows you, God, in the pardoning of her sins, Father. I pray that you watch over Minister Harper, God, um, that you would keep her and strengthen her. Father, she waits on you, God, that you will be with her, God, in her time of need, God, that she would just feel loved, God, by you and by the church family, Father, that we reach out to her, God, and encourage her, Father, in Jesus' name. And truly bless Carl King, Father, touch his body, continue to um, encourage him, Father, continue to bless him, God, in the name of Jesus, give him what he needs, God. You made his body, you know him, God. You know what he needs, Father. Continue to give him the strength content to continue on to march forward, God. Bless Keith. Bless his health, God. Continue to keep him and strengthen him in everything that he does, God. Help him, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless Pastor Bobby, God. Pray that you would touch him and keep him. Continue to heal. Continue to work in him, God, and from the inside out, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would bless the Maxwell family, God. You know what they need, Father. You know what they need, God. And I pray that you will be with them, Father, in Jesus' name. Look in their hearts, God, and deliver, Father. Bless um, Mom Seal, God. Continue to be with her. Touch her body. Heal, protect, and deliver, God. Strengthen her, God. Strengthen her mind, God. Strengthen her resolve, God, to keep going, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, also, bless the young family, God, um, with the funeral plans they have to deal with, Father. Continue to... Um, Bless that family in the, in the time of need and in the time of loss, God, and continue to bless each person in the, on this track, God, and all those that hear the word, God. Bless our hearts, God, just to receive your word that has gone forth today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk in the spirit, Father, to continue to do your will, God, to continue to preach the gospel to, to the lost, God, to have a heart for the lost, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. This concludes our church service for this morning. We thank you all for joining in with us. We thank you for your faithful participation. We ask that God will continue to bless you. So on behalf of Pastor Bobby and First Lady Grace, we invite you to come back time and time again as the Lord sees fit. Remember that it's the shed blood of Jesus. The shed blood of Jesus. It's the shed blood of Jesus. We thank God for the blood. We ask that you continue to uh, look up to Jesus. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, we invite you to join us on Facebook uh, next for uh, Pastor John's teaching. So God bless you and keep you. Remember, God loves you and so do we. Be blessed. <laughs>